welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friends. Welcome to the middle of the week. I appreciate so much you making Bible Tract Echoes a part of your day. If it's possible right now, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God, and join me as my Bible sits open to Romans chapter 1. That's Romans chapter 1. And if you can, have pen and paper handy to write some notes down. I really strive to make the Bible passage before it's very clear and usable, and I think some notes will aid you in putting your own heart and life into the teaching time, not just now, but even for later on. And before I get done here today, I will be encouraging you to get from us a free sample packet of our gospel tracts. Do you know what a gospel tract is? Well, in a moment, I will explain what that is and talk about one of the tracts that's in that sample packet. But right now, let me lead into our Bible study this way. Rarely, rarely, rarely do I ever urge you to go back to a previous day's broadcast, but I am encouraging you to do that today. On Monday's study, I began with a story. It was a story about a king named King Truth. He was a good and gracious king, and in the story, a man named Mr. Foolish led a rebellion against King Truth, and they put King Truth into prison. They held King Truth as a hostage. Well, the biblical text behind the story that I made up is found here in Romans chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. And obviously, king truth in my story is God. Our verses are clear on this one issue. The truth that God exists has been made clear to all people. People, though, have rebelled against the truth that God is. And I began on Monday using some words, all beginning with the letter P, like in the word pumpkin, I'm going to take and go back to that here, go back to verses 18 to 20, repeat that one word and go on to some others. So have your pen and paper handy to jot down those words and help us walk through that Bible passage together. All right. Romans chapter one, in a moment, I'll begin to read it. Verse 18. I mentioned the gospel tracts here a moment ago. A gospel tract is an evangelism tool. It's a tool to help us move the gospel forward by giving it to people. Sometimes we have the opportunity to share the gospel verbally with people one-on-one. Even then, giving them a gospel tract afterwards is a great thing. But many times we don't have the opportunity to sit down with 10, 15, 20 minutes and walk through the gospel presentation. So we give them this evangelism tool called a gospel tract. Our ministry here, Bible Tract, Tracks Incorporated has for 81 years been publishing gospel tracks, giving them away free of charge, even paying the shipping, doing this all over the world. I want to give you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. There's about 40 tracks in there. One of them, our smallest one, is this one called Charge It with a question mark. It is the size of a credit card, and it's that way by design. We all know what it means to charge something to a credit card account. Well, our sin... For us to be saved, our sin must be charged to the account of Jesus Christ. That's why he died on the cross, to pay our sin debt. When you turn this card over to the backside, a clear, simple gospel presentation is made by using the Word of God. Question number one, we're told to admit you are a sinner, and there's two snippets of the Bible here. For all have sin, and the wages of sin is death, and it goes on from there. This is a great, great, clear, simple gospel tool, easy to hand out, and by the way, easy to slide into the credit card slot at the gasoline pump. 
When you get done putting your card in and pulling it out, slide this one in. The next person is going to have to pull this out before they can use their card, and you've just put the gospel in their hand. Be ready, please, when my announcer gives our contact information. By the way, you can just go to our web site and get the sample packet ordered that way. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Well, if your Bible's open, Romans 1 verse 18 says this, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his, even God's eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Stop, please, right there. Now, starting with verse 18, we begin a section that teaches us why we need the gospel message. The word gospel means good news. And as we go through verse 18 here of chapter 1 and read on through chapter 3, verse 20, we're going to see how sinful we all are. The one word title that many, many people, including me, give for chapter 1, 18 through chapter 3, verse 20 is this, condemnation. That's the outline title, condemnation. These verses end up by declaring that all people in every place stand condemned before God due to our sinfulness. Well, the point here of chapter 1, verse 18 to the end of the chapter is simple. The point is all Gentiles are guilty of God. All Gentiles are guilty before God. When we get to chapter 2, the Holy Spirit is going to show that all the Jewish people, all the moral people are guilty before God. But again, the first three chapters of Romans have just one basic goal. It is to show how unrighteous and unfit we all are and why we cannot stand before a holy, righteous God. Now, let me get some outline information out of the way right here and now. My outline title for chapter 1, verses 18 to the end, that is verse 32, is this. I've called it Gentiles Are Guilty. It's not real slick, but it gets the point across. Chapter 1, 18 to 32, Gentiles Are Guilty. Now, I've got two sections there. Verses 18 to 23, my subtitle there is Deliberate mind of Gentiles, the deliberate mind of Gentiles, and then verses 24 to 32, the depraved morality of Gentiles. So, uh, we've got the, the deliberate mind and the depraved morality. These are the two major sections here in the second half of chapter one. I'll have some other points to add underneath each one of these as we go through. Now, let's look at this section here, the deliberate mind section, verses 18 to 23. And the major thing here is that we have, people have, deliberately suppressed God's truth, the the truth about God. The truth here is that the truth about God has been made known and we suppress it. I'm going to use four words, all beginning with the letter P, like in the word pumpkin, to walk through verses 18 to 20. I gave the first word on Monday's broadcast. It was the word problem. Verse 18 ends with these words, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. And on Monday, we said that that word hold means to hold down or to suppress this truth that God is. The issue is not lacking truth, but we willfully, deliberately suppress truth. Thus, my title, the deliberate mind of Gentiles. But now my second word, beginning with the letter P, is the word proof. The word proof based upon verse 19, the proof that God does exist and some things about this kind of being that he is are obviously declared in creation. Verse 19 says that God has manifested, notice the word manifested, this truth in people, not around them, in them. The word manifest means that God has made these things apparent. There is no fogginess about it at all. Again, go to the end of verse 19. There it says these words, God hath 
showed it, that is the truth, unto them. That word showed, or English word showed, is the same word only in verb form that we have translated manifest. The truth has been made obvious, and God himself is the one who has made it obvious inside of people. So, word one, problem. Word two, proof. My third word is the word power based upon verse 20. Listen again to verse 20. It says, for the invisible things of him, of God, from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his, God's eternal power and Godhead. The truth of God's power, that is his power to work and create, this truth is clearly seen. The handiwork of our created world obviously demands a designer and a maker. When I walk down the street and I see a hopscotch drawing on the sidewalk, I automatically know that there are children living nearby. That simple drawing demands somebody with a brain to have been there. If we can be sure that there had to be a person to draw the hopscotch lines, how much more we must be sure that a designer and builder is necessary to make this universe of ours. And this designer builder of our universe must be a powerful person. Our universe is full of power. Just study our own sun up in the sky. It explodes with levels of power that we struggle to calculate. And our sun is just one among billions of stars. For there to be this much power in our world and our universe, then our creator must possess even far more power. My fourth word, beginning with the letter P, is the word presence. The fact that God made this world means that he was present prior to creation. You know probably Genesis 1.1. Well, Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That book, our Bible, does not begin by giving to us an explanation about who God is and where he came from. It begins with the reality that God is, has been, and always will be, and the eternal God created the heavens and the earth. Now, stop for, with me for a moment here. At this very outset of God's treatise, God's uh, dissertation on the gospel here in the book of Romans, God does not begin by saying, God loves you. The Holy Spirit writes four basic things. Number one, God exists. Number two, God is angry at sin. Number three, God is powerful enough to judge sin and those who've committed sin. And number four, it begins by telling us that we all know this is absolutely true. We know these facts are true. You and I need the good news of the gospel about how we can be right with this powerful God who is angry at our sin. Dear friend, if you've never received Jesus Christ, the issue is not your lack of knowledge that you're a sinner and your lack of knowledge that you need a savior. Your issue is you have willfully suppressed these facts because you don't want them to be true, but you will stand before a holy, powerful God and you'll not be right with him. He will judge your sin unless you come his way to his son to be saved today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.